Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode of the Gubar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. As always, I'm your host, Nate Ebel, and today we're talking some software project management tips. Specifically, we'll be talking about how to de-scope your software project. Now, as software developers, we're often asked to build big, new, and exciting features on a schedule that is far less exciting, often being asked to build more in less time. As developers, we generally see trade-offs here. Do we write fast, sloppy code? Do we skip on tests? Do we skimp out on our QA processes? Do we build only for the now at the expense of the future? Basically, we start thinking of all the ways we might be able to meet the desired project timeline. Developing the instincts and the skills to make these decisions is an ongoing process. These skills become increasingly more important as you move into manager, tech lead, and other leadership roles. Today, we're going to talk about one specific strategy for these situations, and that is de-scoping. De-scoping a project or a feature simply means making it smaller. This might mean cutting out a few bells and whistles, or it could mean making large changes to the overall project requirements. As builders, this may feel a bit dirty at first. We want to build the big, exciting thing. Cutting features might feel like a bad thing only to be done at the end of a project once it's clear a deadline will be missed. It might feel very passive in that sense. However, de-scoping can be a very proactive process. De-scoping allows you to make these decisions early in the process, before the decision is made for you later in the development process due to resource constraints, changing timelines, etc. When starting new work, we often think of it as everything being handed to us must be involved in that V1 release. Now, sometimes this is true. Sometimes there are regulatory issues that force our hand. Sometimes there are just really mission critical things that are not to be compromised on. However, a lot of time we do have a choice to be able to make these decisions as part of that de-scoping effort early on in the project planning process. This process of cutting things out of a V1 release or a V2 release is made much simpler if we have a culture on our team of iterative development, iterative feedback, and continuous releasing there's a much easier ask to delay something by a sprint or two if we're going to be continually releasing in that time frame, as opposed to just taking the waterfall approach to include everything into this big monolithic V1 release. Remember, just because something is in the initial Figma that you're handed as a developer doesn't mean it has to be in that V1 release. So if everything is potentially on the plate, for the eventual follow-up release. What is the point of the individual milestones? Why break this big deliverable down into smaller releases? Why even go through that process of maybe pushing back against a product team or a design team to break this project up? Well, maybe the biggest reason is that it helps our teams, our organizations, and our companies stay more agile. Smaller deliverables give us off-ramps, points where we can reassess the value of continued development of a feature, places where we can more easily move resources to other projects or respond to changing markets and business opportunities. Smaller deliverables also help us release earlier and more often, which means we start answering questions about what we're building earlier as well. This can give us stronger signal early on in a project, that what we're building is the right thing to be building, and that we're building it in the correct way to solve the core problems at hand. Now, we've talked a bit about the what of descoping and the why of descoping a project, but as software engineers, you might be more interested in the how. 
how can you, as a developer, start to build this thinking and the skill for breaking apart projects for faster, more iterative delivery? Now, that is a really great question, and I don't believe that there is a single answer here. At least, I haven't personally found one. But I can share a few things to consider and a few questions to ask yourself and to maybe take back to your teams for discussion that may help in answering these questions for you, your team, and your projects. First, for any project, you want to consider what is the minimum viable product. What is the core of the experience? What is the minimum experience that provides value to your customer or that solves the immediate problem? Is something a must-have or is it a nice-to-have? You should also consider what is the deadline for this project. Are there external factors such as some external date or event that are going to dictate what must be delivered or when it must be delivered or both? And then you might want to consider the individual groupings of features. Are there any features that are easily isolated from the rest? Are there individual work streams that could be parallelized by adding additional developers to the team? Are there features that simply aren't needed for V1 and can be postponed to that V2 or that V3 release in a few weeks? You might think about things like, does your feature need to be fully localized for that first release? Do you need full A-B testing support from day one? Do you need full comprehensive analytics in that initial release? Honestly, the list goes on and on and on. The important theme through all of these questions and all of these discussions is that we should be asking these questions. We should be thinking very critically about everything that will go into a project and be thinking about ways to simplify or shrink that initial deliverable to make sure that we can hit all of the critical timeline milestones and still be solving those core business problems. When done well, descoping can have a massive impact on your team culture and on your impact, whether you're an IC, a manager, a tech lead, or whatever type of role you might be playing in the project. There's a big difference between carefully and thoughtfully deconstructing a feature into manageable deliverables that take into account things like tech investment, external deadlines, and the health and well-being of your team versus maybe getting to the same deliverable at the end, but getting there because you were forced to because you didn't plan for it, because you maybe kept people on a death march of unreasonable deadlines and then had to pull back because it wasn't a reasonable timeline to begin with. That second scenario is much more detrimental to your team. It can shift the way you talk about your project to external stakeholders. It might impact the way you have to market your release externally. It might also have a huge negative impact on the morale of your team by forcing people to work towards deadlines they might feel are unreasonable, forcing them to work through extra hours, and then ultimately having to cut features and scope anyways, that can be a really hard place to operate as a team for an extended period of time. So to wrap things up, keep project descoping in mind. The next time you are doing discovery for a project or developing your next implementation plan, if you think that the timeline is going to be a challenge, start asking those critical questions to determine exactly what the most important core features are and start thinking how you can iteratively deliver values to your stakeholders. Developing this skill can help your teams release more value with lower risk and allow you to maybe just find the better alternatives earlier on in the process. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review, share on social media, and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or topic idea, I'd love to hear from you, and you can send those in to podcast at goobar.dev for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening, devs. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.